got to be the very best. Like, no one ever... Oh, wait a second. That's the wrong anime. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Snyder. Today's Throwback Thursday. Happy Thursday. If you're new around here, on Thursdays, we go back before the year 2000. In my last Dragon Ball video, which was like six months ago, I mentioned how I never read or watched this series growing up. It's super popular, it's super influential, and yet here we are in current year knowing barely anything about it. Last time, I took a look at the Emperor Pilaf arc, the introductory arc, but now it's time to look at the second arc, which is even more influential and important to literally all of anime today. Let's take a look. When we last left the Dragon Ball gang, Goku said his goodbyes to Bulma and ventured off alone across the land. If you don't know anything about it, created by Akira Toriyama, Dragon Ball is one of the most popular manga and anime of all time. I already have an entire episode dedicated to the first arc and exactly what this series is. So in case you've never heard anything about it, which is very uncommon because almost everybody knows about this series, you can go check that out first. But the second arc is arguably the most important arc of the original series because it establishes a trope that will continue to be used in every shonen manga to this very day. That trope is the tournament arc. Naruto, Fairy Tale, One Piece, Black Clover, and even One Punch Man utilize this particular story trope and it all started with Dragon Ball. After the first saga where the main group of Goku, Bulma, Yamcha, and Oolong find the legendary Dragon Balls for the first time and waste it on a dumb wish, our main character Goku heads to Master Roshi where he trains in martial arts alongside a new character, Krillin. It's the first half of this arc which is rather quite pleasant. Instead of taking on the road trip vibe that the Emperor Pilaf arc had, which admittedly I do hope to see return later down the road, we now have the classic shonen training sequences. Now I personally haven't seen a whole lot of shonen anime, but what I have seen, I'm used to seeing the bright-eyed, determined hero ready to train as hard as possible, and again, Dragon Ball basically pioneered these story elements. What Goku does that's different to other anime though, like Naruto for instance, is that Goku doesn't really have many flaws. Sure, he's naive, but his naivety comes from his innocence, which in many ways actually helps him succeed. Not only that, but he's extremely strong. So while yes, Master Roshi does put him through the ringer, expecting way more out of both him and Krillin than they were prepared for, you really don't see as much struggle in his training compared to other shonen protagonists. In some ways, this does disconnect the relatability of Goku. I mean, honestly, I don't think anybody could actually relate to him. He's this super powered individual, much like Superman is, but this is why we have Krillin. Here is somebody that's still fairly strong, determined, and adamant to being the very best he can be, but he's also strictly a human being, which means he ends up struggling way more than Goku does. I'm fairly certain that Toriyama does this entirely on purpose so that children can still have a character that they can project themselves onto. The balance between these two as they train and develop their rivalry slash friendship is near perfect, and honestly, the training stuff is my favorite part of this arc. But that's not to say that I don't still love the actual tournament itself. We learned that Krillin's main goal is to win the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament, and so Master Roshi helps him and by extension Goku train for it. So about halfway through the arc, we get an actual tournament. Now, I will say that the tournament does feel a bit too long, especially in the anime. So I'm a bit mixed on it because on one hand, it is kind of cool that we basically get an entire fighting tournament arc in the series. It is a neat trope that adds a good bit to shonen anime in general, but towards the middle of it, it does feel like it goes on a little bit too long and I get a little bored. But again, I still overall like it. The actual tournament itself is full of preliminary battles at first, which shows just how strong Goku and Krillin really are. I feel like this is a very solid way to show how much their training actually paid off. And then we get into the quarterfinals. Spoilers from this point onwards about the entire tournament. Here we have a total of seven full length battles. Some of these are great, some of these are just okay, but at the minimum, every one of them definitely adds something new to the entire Dragon Ball universe. The first battle is Krillin versus Bacterian, the smelliest fighter in the world. He uses his epic gamer stench to fight his foes, and this is an okay fight. It's nice to see that Krillin is strong enough to take on this dude, and I, I do like the gimmick here, but it also feels like it goes on a little too long. 
The next battle is Jackie Chun versus Yamcha. Once they get to the tournament, it's really cool to revisit all the main characters from the first arc. It's almost bizarre that these characters were main characters in the beginning of the story, yet we don't see them until halfway through this arc. I think that this is actually a great way to go about storytelling because it does make Dragon Ball feel like a much grander story since we don't have to know everything about every character at all times. So we do get Yamcha back and he's fighting the mysterious Jackie Chun. This battle was also mainly just okay for me. I mean, Yamcha isn't particularly that powerful and interesting. He does make it to the quarterfinals, but because he's not as powerful as Goku and because we don't spend as much time with him as Goku, I, I just think fighting wise and character wise, he's just kind of whatever so far. But the important part of this battle is setting up Jackie Chun and that'll be for later. Match three sets us up with Nam versus Ranfin. And this is probably my least favorite battle in the whole thing because for starters, Ranfin is a female fighter whose techniques lie in being attractive and using that to deceive her opponents. She doesn't really have anything particularly special about her character and we don't even see her later in the tournament. I also am not a big fan of Nam, though at least he has a purpose as a pity fighter. In other words, he has a goal of winning the tournament so that he can use his money to bring water to his village. This is important because this character so obviously needs to win more than anybody else in the tournament, so it makes us conflicted when he eventually ends up going against Goku. Moving on to match four, we have Goku versus Giren, and this is probably my favorite of the quarterfinal battles. Giren is this bizarre dinosaur type creature who's truly threatening. Sure, we know that Goku won't have too much trouble fighting him, but it does make for an entertaining battle. The best part about this fight though is that Goku regrows his tail. After the end of the first arc when we see Goku become this gigantic ape, we learn that a lot of his strength comes from his tail, so Bulma and the others end up cutting it off so that he can lose that strength and turn back into, you know, small sized Goku instead of gigantic scary Goku. This ended up adding a handicap to Goku up into this point, which means throughout the training sequences, Goku hasn't been his full strength. It makes him even more impressive and it makes this fight even more exhilarating and entertaining. With Goku winning, we move on to the semifinals, which pits Krillin against Jackie Chun. This one was also a solid fight. Again, we're really solidifying the character and the mystery of Jackie Chun, while also seeing how strong Krillin has come, even though he's clearly not going to be able to win against Jackie Chun. Match six pits Goku up against Nam, who again, makes us as the viewer conflicted because Nam really needs to win, but Goku's the main character, so we want him to win too. Either way, Goku is clearly the superior one here, and after the fight, we learn that Jackie Chan is, get this, Master Roshi. Who saw this coming? Because I'm gonna be honest with you, I saw it almost a mile away. It is a cool twist. I do honestly like it. I do wish there was a little bit more mystery to it, but we learn throughout the other battles that he is Master Roshi. He signed up for the tournament because he didn't want his students to win. And I think that's funny. I think that's great for his character. And it was one of the first things that actually made me like his character because up until this point, he's just been a perverted old man. I mean, he, he basically still is just that, but at least like he's a good master too. Fortunately, after Goku beats Nam, Jackie Chun or Master Roshi does give some money to Nam so he can provide water for his village. So I'm glad we get that happy ending. But now it's time for the main event. Jackie Chun or Master Roshi versus Goku. And this is the fight. This is the thing that really makes this arc worth it. Not only is this a great battle, but we get to see Master versus Student. Since the arc does start out with Goku fighting Master Roshi to train under him, it's such a great ending to the arc to see how far Goku has come in such a short time. And let me tell you, this battle is a doozy. We get Kamehameha waves. We get giant ape Goku. We get a moon obliterated. It's wild. And the best part about it is we expect Goku to win multiple times even, and yet, Roshi is still able to hold his own so much that at the end, he's the winner. And it means that yes, Goku is strong. Yes, he's stronger than he was at the beginning of the arc. But it's so cool to see that he still has a long way to go before he's the strongest of them all. At the end of the day, this does make the tournament arc worth watching and reading. I really enjoyed this arc. It was so much better than the first arc, which I did like. Again, I like the road trip vibe of it, 
but it did feel like it went on a little too long. I didn't really care for Ipper Pilaf at all, but this arc, this established Goku as a character that I started to enjoy more. I started liking the other characters more, and I'm actually kind of excited to go on to Dragon Ball Z at some point because we're gonna see a lot of these battles throughout that series primarily. But that's not to say that I'm also not looking forward to seeing what's to come after this. Goku has become stronger, but he also learns the importance of failure. And I'm very excited to see how this impacts him in the upcoming arcs. But anyways, that's all the time we have for today. If you liked the video, go hit that like button. If for a reason you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down in the comments, what are your thoughts on Dragon Ball, the tournament arc? By the way, I need to point this out right quick. The 100th episode is upon us. It comes out tomorrow. After that, we're going to take a small break, like two to three weeks, so that I can do some new things for season two of the show. We're going to make it bigger. We're going to make it better. I'm excited. I hope you guys are too. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.